Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a past exam question on homeostasis and the endocrine system, focusing in on aldosterone and how it affects blood pressure. Now, this question is difficult, guys. I chose this because it is a combination of an application question, but also an investigation question, which I know is our Achilles heel. I also have some more exciting news, and you are the first to hear about this. I am launching my Smart Start series, which is a set of workshop videos for matrix going into their finals, needing that extra push, and that's going to be available on my website, missangler.co.za, and keep an eye out on my socials for that. You guys have been asking me to tutor you. Well, this is the answer to that. Think of it being as the ultimate masterclass, the thing that's going to get you ready for your finals. So let's get into the question. Now, as always, we need to prepare our question and read through it and take out all the important piece of information in the introductory paragraph. So it says hyperaldosteronism is a disorder caused by the over secretion of aldosterone and it's being linked to high blood pressure. Now, scientists investigate the influence of increased aldosterone levels on blood pressure, and the procedure was done as follows. They took 1,688 healthy volunteers, or age 55, then they participated in this investigation. The participants' blood pressure was measured and recorded before the start of the investigation. The participants were injected with a dose of aldosterone in the morning, and their blood pressure was then measured every hour for 12 hours. This procedure was followed over four days for each individual, and the average blood pressure was calculated. All participants followed the same diet during the period of investigation. So there's a lot of pieces to unpack here. First of all, we're talking about a disorder. We're also talking about using people and, and altering their natural levels of aldosterone. And so let's go into the questions and see how the information in the paragraph is going to make it easier to answer these questions. Starting off with the first question. 3.3.1 says, name the gland that secretes aldosterone. So we're going in with a nice, easy question right at the beginning. The gland is going to be the adrenal gland. Let's go into the next question. It says, identify the independent and dependent variable. Now, there is a trick to this, everybody. We need to find the aim in the paragraph. And if we find the aim in the paragraph, then we can find the variable. So let's go back to the paragraph. What we're looking for here is a sentence that says something like, to investigate, to determine, to measure. Now, sometimes it's not very obvious. And as you go through the higher grades, it becomes harder to spot. But I want to show you where it actually is here. It says, scientists investigated the influence of increased aldosterone levels on blood pressure. Now, that is the to investigate, right? So they investigated the influence of increased aldosterone on blood pressure. Those are our two variables. Now, which one is which? Well, the independent variable is the variable we are testing, which in this case is the increased level of aldosterone. And the thing we are measuring is the dependent variable, which in this case is people's blood pressure. So the independent variable is going to be the influence of increased aldosterone levels. And we're going to take it straight here from the paragraph, and the dependent variable is going to be blood pressure because that is the thing that we are measuring. Moving on into our next question, and this one is about reliability. So it says, give two reasons why the results of the investigation may be considered reliable. Now, again, this is definitely one of our weaknesses. We don't know the difference between reliability and validity. Reliability is all about repeating the experiment and it's about results validity is about variables and that's about keeping everything the same same time same place same people same age etc so when we talk about reliability there are three key ones we always look for 
And that is we look for whether or not they calculated an average, whether or not there was a large sample. And lastly, did they repeat the experiment, right? So let's look at the text and see if they did any of these things. And we've highlighted some key bits that maybe will be able to help us answer this. So first of all, did they calculate an average? Well, yes, they did, because if we actually look over here, they mentioned in the paragraph they calculated an average. So we could give that as an answer. Did they give a large sample size? Yes, they did. 1,688 people is a large sample size. And if you're wondering, but ma'am, what, what would that be in context? Like what then means is a large sample size? Well, three or four or 10 people is not a large sample size. The moment you start to go beyond that, so we start to become 50, 60, 70, 100 participants, that becomes a large sample size. But if it's anything less than 20, that's really not a very big sample size. Then moving on to the last, did we repeat this experiment? And if you look very carefully, we did repeat this because we repeated it over four days. Now, that means that you could give any one, oh, sorry, any two of these. But please keep in mind that when you do give the answer, you need to give it in context of the work. So please don't just say they used a large sample size. No, rather write out the your reason being they used 1,688 people which is a large sample size. Like write that out in a full sentence. Likewise, for calculating the average or repeating, say something like they conducted the experiment over four days and they calculated an average. That is what I would want you to say. A nice full sentence. No um, generic answers, please. Now let's move into our next question, which is explain two reasons why it is important for participants to follow the same diet during the investigation. Now I'm just going to remove some of the text down here so that I can write down my answers. Now first things first, let's remember good answering practice, which means we need to focus on how we structure our answers. This is an explain question, which means if it's for four marks and it's two reasons. We need to make a statement and then a reason and then a statement and then a reason. So let's have a look at our first statement linked to why is it important for participants to follow the same diet during the investigation. So firstly, our statement is that we want to keep the variables constant. Why do we want to keep the variables constant? because we want to maintain validity, which means that if we maintain validity, then our experiment and the final results are actually valid. The second thing about maintaining the same diet is that if you think about it, different diets have different levels of salt in them and aldosterone is linked to salt. So if you don't maintain the salt level in people's diets, it may affect the outcome of this experiment. So having the same diet will keep salt the same. And if we keep the salt the same reason, then we can maintain the blood pressure at the same level. And generally that last point is linked to the fact that High levels of salt lead to high blood pressure, which we actually speak about right here in the beginning of the paragraph. Let's move on to our next question, 3.3.5. It says, explain why the participant's blood pressure was measured before the start of the investigation. Now, if you think about it, if we are going to do an investigation as to whether or not there is an influence between salt um, aldosterone and the blood pressure, we need to know where we're beginning from, right? We need to know, was there actually any change? Was there any difference? And so we're looking for a comparison. We need to compare before and after. And so remember, this is an explain question. So again, we'll need a statement and a reason, just one of each because it's out of two. 
And our statement is going to go as follows. To compare blood pressure, reason, well, because we need to compare before and after administering the aldosterone. And that will obviously give us an indication of whether or not something's happened to this person. Because if we don't do a before and after, there's nothing to compare to, so we don't know if the aldosterone has had any effect. Now, last but not least, this final question is a little tricky. And I think it's tricky because it's never really asked this way in previous exams. And I actually quite like it because it'll really show you whether or not you're going to be ready to answer this kind of question in your finals. It goes as follows. It says, explain why the levels of salt in the urine of a participant is expected to decrease after being injected with aldosterone. Now, before we go any further, you've got to have a very, very good understanding of salt and where it goes and what happens to your urine. Now, remember, aldosterone is responsible for maintaining your salt in your blood, right? So, if aldosterone levels are going up in your blood, that means that the salt levels are also going to go up in your blood. Now, the only way that that is possible and the only way we've learned about increasing your salt levels without eating any salt is through the kidney, specifically making the tubule, remember the um, nephron, so there is our little nephron, remember this guy from grade 11? We need to make that more permeable so that salt leaves the tubule and goes back into the bloodstream. Now, remember, this is a explain question for three marks. So we must structure it appropriately, which in this case means we need a statement. And now we need two reasons to get full marks. So we are going to say statement. We've got high levels of aldosterone, because remember, we're giving people extra aldosterone here, so it's high levels of aldosterone, have an effect. So if we have high levels of aldosterone, then we will increase the permeability of the renal tubule, then more Salt will be, keyword here, reabsorbed. Emphasis on the re, not just absorbed. Because remember, it was filtered out at some point in the kidney, but we are reabsorbing it. Now, some students struggle with this whole statement, reason, reason, and they struggle to get full marks. So I can give you one more technique that makes this nice and easy. And it is a if and a then statement, right? So basically, we would say something like, if there are high levels of aldosterone, that's the statement, then there will be an increase in permeability, then there will be more salt reabsorbed. If that helps you even more, then use that as like your your mental roadmap in your mind when you're writing out your answer and you'll never miss out on getting full marks. Now here is the official memo. Have a look at it and it's important as you go into any exam or test or your final that you spend time studying the memo a bit. Look at what they're giving the mark to and why they're giving it there. Look at the technique. Look at the style of writing that they are using because that's what they expect you to use at the end of the year and the style of answering is really important for your finals because you want to get full marks and that's why I put so much in emphasis on breaking down, explain, and describe questions and getting full marks for them. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.